Okay, so now, okay, please, please start. Okay. Thank you, introduction. Today we talk about uh, some dualities of W algebra related to uh, Piggy semi-catalog conjectures. A joint work with um, Thomas and uh, Shigemori and Ryo. So, first I explain uh, some introduction for vertex algebra. And uh, later I explain uh, what is W algebra. And uh, I explain some what Piggy semi-catalog conjecture and uh, of, um, explain main result and finally explain some application for most categories relationship between the dual W algebra. So, so uh, first I explain the uh, vertex algebra. Maybe I will pick some notation or some standard notion uh, appearing in vertex algebra theory. The uh, simplest example is a uh, Heisenberg vertex algebra. So, so we take uh, some H as a self n dimensional uh, vector space. It could be with some, some bilinear form. Then we have, uh, we consider a center extension of this loop algebra of H. This is now commutative real algebra. So uh, relationship HN we do not HDN. Uh, this is a standard relation H prime HN, SM HH prime, N plus N K. This is a central extension. So now K is a central element. So we take, uh, we want to construct the Fox space. So ha hat plus is just a T plus CK. This is resub algebra of ha hat. This is a Heidenberg algebra. And now we consider one dimensional representation acting on this zero and the central element acting on some scalar k. Then we define pi k. This is induced module of half hat plus of ck, okay? And then, so, so now the first uh, PBW, uh, PBW cell then, we know that the uh, other vector space is isomorphic to like that. So this means that pi k is isomorphic to u uh, t minus, and the remaining part will vanish acting on the right hand side. So we get the other vector space, we obtain this isomorphism. Okay, I'm sorry. Is it possible to use a bit larger letters or to make the screen a bit larger? Or I don't know. Uh, second, uh, is it possible to use a bit larger letters, uh, bigger? Ah, letters? okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh -huh. Maybe I, I I usually write uh, small letters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe you can see this. So we will denote by vacuum. So. So, so this pi k is Fock module of ha hat, and uh, in fact, uh, this is uh, uh, this is Heisenberg and that algebra by y. Uh, this uh, by some element a maps to some y a d. Maybe we will denote a z. Uh, this form looks like some a n t minus n minus one and then taking the integer and each a n is some some operator on pi k uh, and the morph is on pi k uh, or former parameter z. Uh, this maps uh, vacuum maps to just identity and uh, h minus one vacuum maps to h z. This is uh, 
H n G minus N minus one. So A A H n is element in hat hat. So this acts on pi k. So this is some uh, define some operate on pi k. And uh, also if you take uh, pi, uh, if you take pi, A H minus N, we define uh, derivation n minus one derivation of HG. Uh, if you take H minus one, H prime minus one vacuum maps to HG, H prime Z, the product vector. This is not very defined, so we need to take uh, standard normal of the product and so on. In, ge in general case, we, we will H1, HS minus NS vacuum maps to derivation H1Z product uh, uh, NS minus 1Z HS uh, V taking normal product and so on. Uh, this Y satisfies the action of WX algebra. Uh, for example, we have locality. Locality means that uh, for any A and B in pi k, and then there exists some N, some natural number such that uh, Z minus Wn taking bracket Az and Vw equals zero. This so bracket means that bracket on the uh, coefficient. So that now this is just zero. So this locality implies that uh, the product Az and Vw equal to n equals zero to some n and taking z minus w n plus one a n b w plus normal of the product of a c b. So quite implies this, more, this identity. And uh, this is very defined if z equal w because we take normal of the product. So this means that uh, this is a regular part for z equal w. On the other hand, this part is a singular part. So we will write, uh, in this case, we will write uh, uh, just uh, some, in, in, in this notation, we will denote a singular part of uh, az times uh, vw. And the result is this. And this is uh, operator product expansion or just OPE. And the example is our cases, we consider, for example, these two fields. And then the OPE looks like uh, now acting level with K. Looks like this. And uh, this is, in fact, uh, uh, equivalent to. Uh, this bracket relation. Okay, so this means that uh, OPE is an uh, algebraic uh, relation in vertex algebra. So, so this means that uh, if we determine the OPE or field, uh, we can determine the structure of vertex algebra. Okay, so this is this is. Standard construction to to define uh, vertex algebra. So we consider uh, simplest uh, W algebra and just a Vila Soro algebra. The Vila Soro algebra, I, I think uh, um, all people know what is Vila Soro algebra, but uh, I will. Mean, um, Determine the notation. So this is uh, this is the infinite dimensional the algebra satisfying this relation. Okay. 
and see the center. And if we take uh, subalgebra, and it's uh, more than minus one, CLN plus CC, this is Lee subalgebra, and consider one dimensional representation. This acts on zero, this starts on some scalar C, and then we denote BC. It is induced module, or maybe call a Fock module of your photo. Also using PBW theorem and other vector space is starting minus two. And then, yeah. This is also vertex algebra. And this is called the Villa Soro. Vertex algebra. And uh, this C is called the central charge. So, so natural question is uh, how to generalize uh, this via for algebra. And uh, this attempt uh, gives a nice uh, family called W algebra. So some kind of generalizations. Of this PC. So, uh, uh, and ninety eighty five. Uh, introduce uh, W three algebra. So this contains uh, also uh, and the VC case on L minus two vacuum up to LZ. So W3 algebra contains a generator, the LZ, but also some chick of adding uh, additional uh, SZ, this is conformal S3. But the point is uh, we can compute the OPE between SZ and SZ. It's uh, closed uh, in this W3, but uh, the corresponding algebraic relation, the Lie bracket between SM and SN contains the infinite sum. So this means that uh, W3 algebra does not come from uh, Fox space of the N, some B algebra. So this means that W algebra W3 is a purely vertex algebraic object. So this is some interesting generalization. And uh, in 19, 1990, so what if and Lucana introduce uh, WN algebra. This is a generalization of double check of W3 algebra. And they consider this is the A type. And uh, so they also introduce B type on the D type and so on. And in fact, Megan uh, Frankel in the same year, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe different, but Megan <laughs> Frankel introduced uh, WKG. For any Lie algebra, Lie simple Lie algebra. This is now called a uh, principal W algebra. This is uh, that example. I want to explain the definition of Fagin uh, Frank. So we take G as a simple Lie algebra. So we consider central extension of uh, root algebra. And this G has an um, affine Lie algebra, and uh, A n is just A t n or A g. The Lie bracket it's not that way. And plus n plus m. This is a invariant by linear form. And also we consider Lee sub algebra, G hat plus, this is GT, the CK. Effecting on one, some one dimension, we consider one dimension representation, this acts on zero, 
exact from some scalar k. So we define BKG. Uh, this is also considered induced module. You see F plus and CK. Also PBW theorem imply that as a vector space, it looks like GT inverse T inverse T CK. And also can define, uh, this is a vertex algebra and called affine vertex algebra. Associate to G at level K. It is in fact uh, or named as uh, in the module, a uh, wire module of uh, induced from previous representation of G hat at level K. And uh, so this Y is uh, A minus one vacuum. So we take one a one at a vacuum. A one, this maps to A Z. A N Z minus N minus N. Then the other element can be corresponding the same way as the Heisenberg cases. And the uh, algebraic relation can be read uh, in the OPE. Uh, OPE looks like uh, in this uh, relation. Okay. And then Craig and Frank will define W algebra by some Greenfield Sokolov reaction of this affine vertex algebra. So this is defined by some cohomology. Uh, the cohomology is uh, defined by some Clifford algebra of N plus. Um, and in fact, uh, N plus some T plus N plus the T. And I don't explain D, but uh, this D is uh, defined by some vertex operator. So in any way, uh, uh, we, we can define uh, such a uh, cohomology. And uh, this means that uh, the vertex are just structure on this complex induces the vertex are just structure on W algebra. So anyway, this defines some vertex algebra is called uh, W algebra, maybe now called the principle. And W algebra Oops. at level K. The example is uh, some WK SL2. This is just a bit of sort of exercise with center charge is one minus six K plus two over K plus one square. And WK SLN is just a WN algebra. So this is a very nice definition. And the later, uh, uh, more generalization happens. So for example, uh, uh, 24, 2004, there's a phase in the They introduce W2N. This is some, uh, they want to just emphasize uh, some interesting second family of WN algebra. So the example is W22 is affine SO2 and uh, W3 is just a bell Shavsky polyp of algebra. Versus Krakow algebra is also some vertex algebra that are not contained in uh, this WKG. So this is motivated why they want to introduce such a W algebra. And uh, they, in fact, the uh, physics people don't check off and but if we can of using a screening operator to define uh, vertex algebra that, uh, and uh, W2M is uh, also defined by screening operator. On the other hand, uh, yes. Excuse me, Jacobs, what does mean uh, number two or in uh, brackets, upper index? Uh, number, you mean W2N? Uh, yes. 
Uh, mm. uh, in their paper, they want to say uh, second important family of W WM. <laughs> uh, ah, so it is choose of uh, yeah. This is just a this is a notation. Element. Yeah, the notation. Yeah. Uh, so, so here he, he, in principle here must be not a number but a yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't take it into the WMN, but only into the W2N. So, <laughs> mm. uh, maybe so it's just it's a, a, some second, some kind. So. Uh, so, it isn't a choice of a new potent element. I, I will explain. Uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> no, no, this, Zhenya, this is just a notation. So, it's this two does not refer to anything. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Oh, okay. in, in, yeah, but in some senses too is a nice notation for, for later. Maybe I'll explain that. So uh, before the paper and after one year, Katsu and Wakimoto introduced uh, a generalized uh, Fagin Frankel construction, generalizing cohomology. They consider WK. G and F. So now G as V uh, super algebra. And now then generalize the uh, Fagin Frank construction for V super algebra case, and F is a near potent element. With even parity in super case. Uh, And defined by uh, some Greenfield Sokolov reduction associated some F for VKG. So they generalize uh, the definition of cohomology of, and get a new family. And uh, in fact, uh, this contains an interesting example. So if by definition, by definition, if you take F equals zero, well, this is just uh, nothing to do that, but just a fine but it's algebra. But if you take G F as principal, so, so F principal is just a principal near potent element. And this is uh, just a WKG. So this is the reason why uh, WKG is called a principal W algebra. And uh, also, if you uh, use the same notation, OSP12, they generalize a uh, super case, so we can deal with OSP12, this super gem. This is just a n equal one super conformal algebra. This is also very important uh, matrix super algebra. In fact, this is a of WE1. And uh, also, they consider SLN1. This is N equal to super conformal algebra, and so on. PSL22, F minimal. They consider minimal near potent element. This is N equal 4, super conformal algebra. This the super conformal algebra means that uh, some Fox space of such algebra induced from a trivial module, right? Because there's a whole construction is a vertex algebra. So, so and uh, I have proved that in 2090, if you consider WK SLN F sub, F sub is um, sub regular. Subregular near potent element uh, is this is isomorphic to the uh, W2N Okay. So this is a, in some sense a nice uh, notation, <laughs> right? But anyway, so we, we, <laughs> we can understand the what is the Fagin semicircle algebra now. Okay. So today's main topic is. Uh, we want to study this uh, Fagin semicircle of algebra and we want to study the duality. So now we want to talk about uh, duality. So uh, 
So important duality is Fagin Frankel duality. I want to explain this. Fagin Frankel duality is uh, uh, if G if G as uh, simply algebra. And uh, K L and uh, complex set that K plus H check L plus L H check equal one. I think R check. R check is a lacing number. So this is A D type is just one. B C F type is just two and G is just three. Uh, H check is dual coxta number. And uh, LH check is uh, the number of uh, LG. LG is a long run the dual G. Then WKG is isomorphic to WL long run the LG. This is a Fagin Frankel duality. So, for example, uh, the Villa Solo case is very trivial. So, WK SO2 equal Villa Solo versus algebra. But now C is this relation. But we can read this uh, later part of just uh, k plus two minus k plus two one square. And the changing k and l mean that changing this two element. So this is induces WL SL2. So, so this means the central charge does not change if you're changing k and l. So this is something trivial. <laughs> Isomorphism, but uh, from the definition, this isomorphism is not free. Okay. So the proof, proof uses a screening operator. So we consider uh, her, that's the CH in SL2. And uh, this is, um, and we can we identify this ha and the ha star by inner product, and this is C alpha. Alpha is now simple root. So we define uh, pi k. This is Heisenberg vertex algebra associated to this ha or ha star. And uh, we want to shift the uh, pi k plus two, okay? And uh, we take lambda and ha star. We define uh, pi lambda k plus two. This is a uh, Fox space induced from C lambda. If lambda acting on H n lambda, it's k times lambda H lambda uh, times delta n zero or n positive. So anyway, uh, this is uh, for also Fox space. I mean, and uh, in the context of vertex algebra, this is a pi module. Uh, Pi, k pi module, and uh, then uh, so there exists uh, embedding and the sort of Bell's algebra included in pi k plus two such that I will write for example rho. This image of rho equal kernel of residue 
of exponential of k plus two alpha z dz. So whatever. Uh, so I, I need to assume that if k is general. So uh, this e lambda z, e lambda z is defined by a very complicated uh, definition that n negative minus n lambda n t minus n just uh, looks like some exponential that uh, that uh, move to positive power, negative power. And this maps to pi k plus two to pi k plus two lambda. And uh, lambda, lambda is now element in Hasta that now we identify in element ha, so we can define such a lambda n. And uh, S lambda is a shift operator, mapping vacuum to lambda and uh, commuting with uh, any lambda n for lambda n equal to Anyway, so we can define such a operator. And uh, by Fagin Frank of duality for SL2 case, SL2 case is trivial. Uh, this kernel of E minus K plus two alpha Z, DZ. I, I mean, so, 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 so this, 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 this means this mean that E K plus two alpha zero, okay? This is formal legitimate, so taking the coefficient of z minus one, okay? So this kernel equal to kernel e alpha z. We have this dual, Villasoro duality. And in general, g case, wkg, uh, Fagin Frank proves that uh, this is uh, isomorphic to intersection of k plus h check alpha i d d z. This mapping to Heisenberg to Heisenberg minus k plus h check alpha i. This Heisenberg is a Heisenberg associated Cartan subalgebra of g. And that the point is uh, this description is isomorphic to one. each kernel, each kernel of screening defined via solo. So this means that uh, each kernel can be changed using this uh, SL2 case duality. So this means that uh, this alpha i changing alpha i check, you see, the alpha i, sorry, alpha i the simple root of G, okay? Alpha i simple root and alpha i check is a core root of simple root. And that uh, we can remember, we can find that this is long run geology. Okay. So this means that uh, using a Vila solo case duality implies a duality of W algebra. So this is uh, duality of pegging like dualities. So natural question is uh, so can we generalize? Uh, these dualities to other W algebra case. It's a very natural nice question. So, for example, uh, this is also well known case as uh, OSP case. OSP case as uh, OSP 1 to N. OSP 1 to N is a very uh, <laughs> Uh, essentially the algebra. This is a super algebra, but uh, the, 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 uh, lots of uh, properties are very similar to the algebra. And this has also, uh, also self-dual uh, dualities and K and L is related by 2K plus 2N plus one. 
to level plus 20 plus 1 equal 1. Okay. This is uh, suggested by also Fatif and the camera, and I have to that this result. But today's talk, today we want to talk about the uh, duality between Fagin Frank, a Fagin semi cut of algebra, and uh, WL SL N1. So this is very interesting, right? Because in the one of algebra okay, is uh, very Yes. Uh, so in your result for OSP, so yes. the, the first argument is one. So OSP one to n, is it important? Yes. It's one there? Yes, very important. So the, do uh, you have a similar result for other OSPs, super algebras? Uh, in fact, uh, I think we cannot expect a similar result for other OSP type because uh, OSP one to n is uh, only simple super algebra whose uh, finite dimensional category is semi simple. I see. So this is some very nice, important characterization of OSP 1 to n. So that's the reason why this OSP 1 to n satisfies a similar property of other V algebra. Okay. Thank you. So, but now today I want to deal with the SLN subregular and the WLSLN1. This is also super algebra. But point is that this is vertex algebra, that the second one is vertex super algebra. So this cannot be isomorphism in any changing level. So that uh, today, Fagin uh, Semikatov suggests the uh, interesting relationship between them. And uh, I want to, uh, to we, we prove that such a duality between them. So what Fagin Semikatov do that? First, I explain Fagin Semikatov's work. So, so we consider U and V. So in a product, U U equal one, V V equal minus one, U and V equal zero. And we consider pi U V. This is Heisenberg vertex algebra associated to C U. Plus CV, okay. And now we define large pi. This is a direct sum of integer pi u v, and but the highest weight is n times u plus v. So by definition, this is a pi u v module. But in fact, uh, this is a vertex algebra by y each u plus v uh, each highest weight in u plus v v is defined by e u e i'm sorry e u <laughs> e n u plus v definition defined using the screening operator type construction. So, so this defines the vertical structure on this large pi. And uh, they consider uh, alpha one, alpha n minus one. This is simple root of SLM. And uh, so we take uh, uh, alpha n minus one, alpha n equal minus one, okay? Uh, no, 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 you, you, you is minus one. <laughs> so, so we consider, and then the Fagin semi cut of, uh, this is in fact the definition. They define uh, Fagin semi cut. Okay, I'm sorry. Algebra. Could you please repeat? So the the last line. So what is minus one? Is the scalar product of what? 
inner product of alpha n minus one and u is uh, we introduce an uh, inner product between them. Okay. And what about other scalar products of other alphas? Ah, uh, that's a simple root, simple root of alpha s n. Okay. Yes, yes, but with u, what what are the scalar products with u and v? A u and v at zero. Okay. Say it again. You uh, you mean uh, this one? No, no, I'm, I'm asking if you take, say, alpha one with uh, you. Alpha one with you is zero. Ah, ah, so all other scalar products are zero. Ah, okay, yeah, all other scalar products are zero. Yeah, this is only in the previous one between you and the other alpha i. I see, and what about v? Yeah, so v is also zero. So v with alpha i are all zero? Yes, I yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, so, so we, then they consider some um, pi level k plus n uh, tensor large pi. This is this is small pi is a Heisenberg vertex algebra corresponding to these generated by these field. The level is now k plus n. And such that uh, this I should write the rule. The image of law is isomorphic to i equal n minus one. Kind of also we can write uh, alpha i t t c intersect uh, maybe I should write alpha no write u u u t. Okay. So this gives a uh, 5k general. So this means that uh, this gives some free visualization of Fagin semicircle of the algebra. And uh, in fact, the uh, right hand side is the original definition of W2N algebra. So uh, next, uh, we want to. Uh, consider our cases in the paper, uh, me and uh, Thomas and the Shigenori paper, we consider free figureization. of W, L, S, L, N, 1. So in our case, uh, uh, we consider phi, phi phi is just one. Then we consider phi phi. This is Heisenberg vertex algebra associated to phi or generated by phi z. And then we can define v z, just a direct sum on phi phi and phi. This is called a lattice vertex. In fact, this is a vertex super algebra, vertex super algebra of lattice Z. Okay. The definition is same, N phi maps to E N phi Z, and, uh, and then this satisfies the vertex super algebra structure. And uh, we define parity of N phi is equal to just N. If n is odd, this is odd, and uh, if n is even, then this is even. And then uh, we can find that uh, uh, we take beta one, beta two, uh, beta n minus one, and uh, this is beta n. That's a simple root of SLN one. This residue then is odd, so the inner product itself is zero. Other is just a two. And then uh, we consider, then we can find that WL SLN1 is embedding in uh, Heisenberg corresponding beta uh, level L plus N minus one. This is generated by these beta. 
This tends to be easy. Such that the uh, image of row also can be like some kind of screening operator. Uh, the expressed formula of uh, screening is not so important. Uh, this n minus one is a dual constant number of SLN1. So, anyway. Yeah, it's beta n, but uh, I should write it here, plus five, okay? So, okay. Uh, so, uh, I, I, wa I want to denote, uh, uh, this is uh, SI. Uh, also, this operator is uh, SN. Okay, uh, screening operator of uh, Fagin semiconductor. maybe write just SI. And, uh, Screening operator for uh, WSLN1, principal W algebra of SL1, that's I will write TI. So the point is uh, the difference. So, in fact, uh, the inner product between alpha, alpha I and the beta I were very similar, but uh, the domain to define screen operator is different, right? SI, the domain of SI, the, some Heisenberg tensor large pi, and uh, the domain of TI is a Heisenberg tensor DZ. So if we can uh, cut in such a, if we change the domain, uh, we obtain the same kernel, so can, def, can obtain the isomorphism. So this means that uh, then uh, in this, in fact, we can find uh, H plus WK SL. Uh, uh, I should write it. There exists uh, pi plus WK SL. This is a Heidenberg vertex algebra. That that's x sub algebra, and also pi minus SLN1. This is also Heisenberg that x sub algebra. And uh, we consider coset. We want to consider coset. Coset means uh, if W is a that x sub algebra V, then we can define coset or commutant of W in V. This is defined by A in V, B and A equals zero, for O, B in W, and N equals, okay? So this means that the, the all element killing the mm, annihilating action of the vertex operator. Then, we consider coset of pi plus in WK SLN Pagin semiconductor algebra. But uh, we see that pi plus is a vertex subalgebra. So this means that the all element of this pi plus in the image of Fifi algebra commute, should commute with the screening operator. So this means that uh, the taking a commutant coincide with uh, uh, cutting uh, the domain of a screening operator. So this SI, the domain of SI is uh, now changing with smaller space. I want to write some pi tilde. On the other hand, if you consider pi minus WL SLN1, this is also can be written as a kernel. Ti and pi to the prime, but uh, we compare with the uh, inner product of alpha i and t alpha i and the beta i, we obtain isomorphism if uh, k plus n and l plus n minus one equal one. So this is tell one. So this means if we take 
Heisenberg concept, we obtained the uh, isomorphism. Um, in fact, we, we, we need to remove uh, minus n plus one of n. Uh, this this case is a uh, pi plus action is trivial. So this means that the uh, uh, cometant is uh, W algebra itself or not smaller than before. So <laughs> this case is very special, but anyway. We obtained uh, this uh, isomorphism. This is fast of several On the other hand, so if we consider WK SLN F sub, because this is small, smaller than before, but uh, before taking commitment, uh, we consider adding lattice vertex algebra. After that, we take commitment by uh, diagonal action, pi tilde prime, diagonal action, Heisenberg action, okay, Heisenberg algebra. Then this means that uh, we can change the domain of the screening of the data. In fact, uh, this case uh, we get the W supergebra itself. Uh, proof is essentially the same. We change, we adding, um, we adding domain and the cutting rank one Heisenberg part and get same and domain between two screen open. In the same way, if we take SL N1 and tensing which literally different lattice vertex algebra, P root minus one D. But anyway, we take uh, diagonal action and then we get the uh, faking uh, semi cut of algebra. That's how. So, so we assume that the distribution. Okay. So this is uh, what the Fagin semicolor suggests uh, between two algebra, and uh, this, uh, this gives some nice uh, uh, proof to get the duality. Okay. So. In fact, uh, this type of duality is called uh, Kazama Suzuki type duality. Because if you consider n equal two case, this, is, this means that the duality of you know, subregular, n equal two means uh, we consider W22 algebra, I mean, Fagin semicircle W22. W22 is a fine SL2 and n equal two. A super conformal algebra. This is very well known, uh, Kazama Suzuki concept construction. And uh, this is very well known. Uh, I don't know. How many pe people? <laughs> I mean, lot, lots of people study this case. Huh? Uh, fast proof is uh, due to Adam Beach, maybe. And uh, universal case, maybe proved by cruelty and ratio. In mathematical context, I, 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 I don't remember the name of the physics, but I'm very sorry. <laughs> and uh, in, in, in this case, uh, we have uh, in this case, uh, for example, there is this nice uh, correspondence between uh, uh, blocks of the representation category of. Um, uh, so block, block, block wise equivalence is studied by Fagin and semicut of Tiffany. And uh, also Ryosato studied uh, block wise equivalence of. Uh, uh, these uh, module categories. 
I, I will explain uh, these generalizations in our case later. So uh, is there any question? After that, I will talk application. Okay, so I'll start to talk about application. So uh, most simplest case is a rational case. And rational case means that uh, some ordinary module, a category of ordinary module is semi-simple and uh, simple modules are finite and finite only finitely many simple module exists in this in the categories. So in the, uh, the name of K, it looks like K plus N as a uh, uh, K plus uh, maybe N minus one, N plus one, maybe. And uh, N minus one, N plus R equal one. Okay. So in, in this case, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, we consider, uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, before rational, I, I should explain one more statement for corollary for, no, corollary three. So cell M1 and cell M2, core. Core, simple core set. Of uh, simple core set. WK and SLM F sub and uh, WL SLM one. I want to explain that statement. So uh, if B have a vertex algebra or vertex super algebra. And then we can consider I a vertex idea. Uh, this means that uh, so AGB is I for any A, B, and any B in I. And then B quotient by I is also vertex super algebra. And uh, we want to denote uh, this is a simple quotient, unique simple quotient of W upper of algebra, and this is also simple quotient. I want to denote the uh, uh, I will changing the upper K to lower K and upper top top L and to bottom L and so on. You use such a notation to denote the simple quotient of the W algebra. And the uh, query three statement saying that uh, if we replace a statement in cell M1 and cell M2, we can replace a universal W algebra to change a simple quotient of the W algebra. Okay, so this, this means the reason, reason is very simple. Reason is a uh, uh, Hock module. Pi lambda is uh, simple as pi module, right? So because uh, if we consider W, uh, universal WK and can decompose uh, uh, Heisenberg module, I mean, and uh, the obtained by semi-simple decomposition, it looks like uh, some, uh, maybe a WK SLN F sub is decomposed to some, some M lambda tensor, some pi lambda plus, uh, the pi, lam pi plus lambda module, pi plus module. But, uh, it, and also if we take idea, Maximum idea, and uh, this also some some looks like uh, in this form because uh, usually idea compatible with Heisenberg action. 
So this means that taking quotient, the only difference between appears in this uh, uh, coefficient part. So this means that uh, if we commit taking Heisenberg commutant and uh, taking a simple quotient commute with each other. So this implies that uh, similar one and a similar two uh, holds for simple quotient cases and get priority three. Okay. So uh, we consider a rational case. A rational case means that um, we consider k plus n equal n minus one, n plus r, n minus r, n plus r equal one. In this case, uh, we consider a commutant of pi plus w lower k sln x sub. This is isomorphic to commutant pi minus wl sln1. But uh, by quotient ratio, Uh, they prove that uh, this commutant is also isomorphic to uh, simple quotient of a principal W algebra over the K plan uh, SL dot R. And uh, K prime plus R equal to, I forgot, uh, maybe R plus one, R plus N, maybe. And this is uh, some level length reality. So this implies that this isomorphism, this isomorphism implies that W smaller K S L F sub is a simple current extension of W K prime S L R tensor some lattice vertex algebra. This is some lattice vertex algebra. But the uh, both of W principal W algebra and the lattice vertex algebra are rational. So this implies that uh, W K S L N F sub is, and also these are some nice modularity conditions named as C2 cofiniteness. So we can prove that uh, these are C2 cofinite and rational. And this inherits a super part. So we obtain the SLN1 and also C2 cofinite and rational in this level. Okay. And also, uh, rational case, we can more study the fusion, fusion ring structure. I mean, this is a rational, so this module category is uh, semi simple and also can define uh, fusion rules. And uh, this implies that, you know, in fact, uh, we obtain CLM. So there exists. Uh, we, we assume that. Uh, this kind of condition, k plus n. That exists uh, one to one. Correspondence. This one. Uh. Between. Simple mods of sub regular W algebra of F sub and simple mods of uh, LR SLN. LR is a simple quotient, unique simple quotient of affine vertex algebra of SLN. And this one-to-one -one correspondence comes from the uh, result of uh, studying the representation theory of principal W algebra due to uh, 
cuts uh, Frank L. Cut Wakimoto and uh, Tomoyuki Arakawa and uh, Thomas Krutik. And they prove that the simple module of principal W algebra can be labeled by simple module of simple course, this affine vertex algebra. So this induces such a uh, one point correspondence. And moreover, uh, this correspondence, this induces an ISOM of the fusion rings. And the second statement is, uh, and uh, we can know that uh, uh, fusion rules of uh, super part. We can know that the fusion rules of super part and, and uh, character um, simple module of this, of this W algebra. W so this do, is do, do you correctly understand that fusion ring is uh, 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 more or less the same as the uh, Grotzenberg ring for uh, Lie algebra? Yes, uh, in fact, we can get because this construction can be comes from simple current extension, and uh, we know that uh, the simple extension pair is a principal W algebra tensor lattice vector algebra. And the uh, lattice uh, fusion structure of lattice as in module is very easy, just a abelian type of thing. Lattice plus some weight plus tensor, lattice plus weight is just a lattice plus weight plus weight and so on. So when the simple current extension induces such a uh, fusion structure and the uh, uh, extension of WK, SL, and S sub using the induction pump, uh, 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 using lattice as a theory, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, thank you. And uh, do I correctly understand that uh, is, uh, such a result uh, means that you have an uh, equivalence of classical uh, yes, representations uh, and uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah. We consider a principal module tensor, lattice module tensor, and uh, taking functor to a faking semiconductor algebra module category and. Uh, this induces uh, compatible with the fusion structure and uh, get the, can check such a fusion ring isomorphism. Because we can fix the coefficient of a fine part and uh, how to change such a coefficient to take in fusion ring and uh, we can see that the coefficient does not change. After uh, we fix a nice level in the world. Also depends on, but the point is that we, we cannot uh, compare other uh, isomorphism because our uh, correspondence is very, uh, uh, some ambiguity happens because we fix some labeling that uh, it's not, maybe possibly we can change the labeling. <laughs> I'm not sure, maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe anyway, uh, at least uh, we can construct uh, uh, one of uh, such a correspondence in the fusion ring isomorphism. So anyway, uh, we can know a lot of results for a rational case. So next question is a general case, what do we know? So, uh, so we want to denote uh, W plus and uh, W plus or W minus, it is WK. And this is Fagin semiconductor algebra, or, and W minus is the principal W algebra 7 1, or uh, a simple quotient, or a pair of simple quotient. And uh, so, so, so we consider M, or this W plus or minus module. Uh, this is a, a weight module. If uh, M admits uh, decomposition of M lambda delta, if lambda is uh, weight uh, with respect to Heisenberg action, 
and delta is a conformal weight with respect to Virasoro's so L direction. And we assume that uh, uh, each dimension is finite. So this is the weight module. And we consider C plus minus. This is category of weight. And W plus minus module. So this contains lots of um, interesting modules. For example, if you consider a fine SO2 and taking at a measurable level, this contains a relaxed uh, weight module, relaxed high weight module, and uh, so on. And anyway, uh, this contains very uh, contain lots of uh, interesting module. And uh, by decomposition of weight, uh, we have block decomposition. Lambda, P over T. Uh, this is some um, lambda is some candidate. We all, we have some block to composition. This is block corresponding to lambda. So now, so so we we have uh, so B plus minus is B root plus minus one T. And then uh, W plus minus tends to be plus minus. This can be decomposed to some lambda. And uh, omega lambda, W plus minus tends to be plus minus, tends to pi shield plus minus lambda, like that. And we know that. Uh, so we define f lambda and plus, for example, you can see plus uh, lambda taking m and maps to, uh, uh, I should go uh, m maps to omega minus lambda m tensor uh, b plus. So this is a commutative part. So this means uh, this maps to c minus. Uh, this is some, I call some, not, some lambda check, uh, depending on lambda. Um, on them. And also we consider f lambda check minus C minus lambda check and uh, C plus lambda taking n and uh, omega um, minus some, I forgot uh, <laughs> check, I forgot the notation that n plus B e minus. This also defines the module by this duality. The cell lamp is F lambda plus and is an equivalent I'll give the an equivalent between of C plus lambda and uh, C minus lambda check. And the inverse is F lambda check minus, okay? So this gives a uh, very standard uh, construction to obtain the uh, duality in the Kazama Suzuki setting. But the uh, interesting point of view is, uh, so we can construct this M lambda plus minus by using a relative semi-infinite cohomology.
So idea is the following. So, so this is equal Frankel and Garland and the comma. Consider relative semi cohomology. Relative means that uh, we consider GL1 hat. This is Heisenberg action. Relative to GL1 action, GL1 to GL1 zero, zero part action for pi lambda tensor pi mu. GL1 action is a diagonal action on Heisenberg module, pi lambda tensor pi mu. Relative to diagonal GL1 action. So their statement is, uh, I, I should write uh, semi-infinite cohomology from n. This is depending on n is, but it's such a vanishing st statement. And also, if lambda plus mu is non-zero, this is vanish. And uh, in this case, just a c. This is a result. This means that uh, if we tensoring Heisenberg and taking cohomology, we get just a one dimensional. And uh, this one dimensional part is uh, spanned by uh, highest weight vector. Okay. So this, in, this means that uh, if we define V chisa plus minus, it's, uh, this is V plus minus tensor some pi plus minus prime. I, I forgot, I uh, doesn't explain the reader, but some tensor in addition to Heisenberg. And uh, consider uh, relative semi infinite cohomology. Lila plus minus um, W plus minus. This is H Lila. This is defined by semi-infinite cohomology, or GL1 hat, GL1, W plus minus tensor, V tilde plus minus, is isomorphic to W minus plus, like that. So this means that uh, instead of uh, taking a coset after tensoring uh, V plus minus, we can use semi-infinite cohomology. And we can prove that uh, this isomorphism is, in fact, isomorphism as a vertex subject. Okay. So now, so if we take M, C uh, plus minus lambda, and we consider H vida plus minus and lambda w w m we define semi infinite cohomology from m tensor and v tilde plus minus some lambda lambda if you lambda appearing with the lambda okay and then our theorem is f lambda plus minus some h leader plus minus some lambda some some prime. I, I don't I for the relationship, but <laughs> anyway, we, we can get uh, we can replace um, this, we can construct this functor using semi infinite cohomology. So, but uh, this point of view, this is in some sense important uh, because, uh, so we consider intertwining operator. If M1, if Mi, C plus minus lambda I, such that lambda one plus lambda two equals lambda three. And then we consider intertwining operator m1, m2, m3. This element f is uh, m1, m2 to some m3, uh, some d plus minus some rho z. 
like that. Satisfying some intertwining operator's action. And then <clears throat> this induces F tilde is a complex between relative semi infinite cohomology. This induces, if you, fit, if you take an element of intertwining operator, we associate such F, we get F tilde for intertwining operator between complex of a relative semi homology defined N1 and plane three, also depending on lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. Then we consider, we consider induced map. <clears throat> And it looks like like that. Right. Like that. The cell lamp is uh, we have. There exists isomorphism between uh, lambda one Re relative semi infinite homology. This uh, semi relative semi infinite homology functor induces isomorphism uh, between the intertwining operators. Okay. So the proof is easy because uh, the proof is easy because uh, we can a plus lambda dot sum lambda check minus is isomorphism to identity. So we can take a homology homology back to we can prove it gives identity on the interesting operator. So we can easy to prove this statement. And moreover, and uh, the, the, because uh, the uh, uh, representative of this uh, cohomology can be written explicitly, because uh, Frank Garza Kama says that uh, this uh, existence of one dimensional, one dimensional part is spanned by highest vector. So we can get to which part define the representative of this F and so we can find, we can follow follow uh, this isomorphism in some sense. And uh, also, also uh, if uh, fusion wing, fusion product is well defined in this category or in this, uh, in this category, this M1, this uh, relative semi-infinite cohomology functor compatible with uh, fusion product. But point is uh, this functor is uh, a blockwise functor. I mean, this H lambda depending on this lambda. So this mapping from block to block, not to define all uh, categories. So this means that uh, relative semi cohomology functor defines, uh, satisfy some blockwise monoidality in some sense, okay? At point, point, point is, uh, one point is for n equal two case. N equal two case. This is studied by Fagin, uh, Semi Kefti and uh, Ryosato. So this is SL2 and n equal super algebra and consider the measure level. And uh, this is the uh, relax, the highest weight module, that uh, the correct dual pair is just a bar module. So this means that uh, to study. Uh, such a fusion rule you know, between the relaxed module is a very difficult but, uh, and the uh, super part uh, relatively easy to study such a uh, structure in the category. 
So this means that our relative technical homology function may be used to study such a difficult uh, level case, and I mean, non-rational case, and uh, useful um, technique in some sense. Oh, okay, anyway, I, I will stop now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So any questions? Is the case of a uh, subregular uh, nilpotent much easier than a uh, general case? Uh, in fact, uh, I think uh, we also have results uh, for B type. A B type pair is a subregular SO2 n plus one sub and uh, OSP 2 to n. And uh, I think uh, we, we have two, two paper, CTN and CTNS. And CTN proved the duality, algebraic duality for A and B type. And uh, CTNS, uh, we only deal with the A type of simplicity, but I think B type we talk about we, we derive uh, in the similarity. Uh, so, so the main uh, result which I can understand uh, f f from uh, your you talk is that there is a duality between uh, sub uh, subregular double the algebra of uh, Lie algebras and uh, double algebras of uh, Lie super algebras. I think so. And uh, in fact, uh, further generalization uh, suggested by uh, Guy of Lapchak. Uh, our we take commutant. Uh, commutant cases uh, we also in theorem one and we prove that the com Heisenberg commutant of subregular is isomorphic to Heisenberg commutant of uh, super. Mm -hmm. Such an isomorphism is uh, some special case of Gaia-Lapchak duality, Gaia-Lapchak conjecture, and uh, proved by Kurtik and Rinsho. And p type is also proven. And uh, in fact, uh, there's a lot of other cases uh, for, but uh, need to take a comment. So the point is uh, our result suggests that uh, W algebra, if we does not take uh, such a cost comment, uh, there is some Kazamasuki type cost that we hold uh, in Gaia to Lab check W algebra. And maybe, yeah. And uh, such a module category can be treated using the same relative semi homology in the same way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? So this, uh, this case where you have OSP2 to n is also doable, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, uh, so in OSP2 to n cases called a C type or super C type. Okay, okay. So the inking diagram looks like a C type, but one of the node is uh, odd. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this reason why uh, <laughs> looks like a nice duality. So yeah, but you're saying that B type and... no way to put there larger than two, yes? So numbers. Uh, there is this such a, uh, we can add such a, for example, if you consider 2m to n, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that uh, the w algebra part is not the uh, sub regular w algebra, but other mm -hmm. w algebra, maybe. Mm -hmm. You can find uh, such a dual pair in a uh, critic green shirt uh, paper. Okay. That is uh, suggested by Gaia Dorapcha conjecture. Okay. okay. But maybe all, all super algebras uh, which uh, appear in your talk uh, have a typicality one, maybe it's important. Yeah, I think so. I think these are very uh, non trivial but uh, simple cases, maybe useful to understand what happened. Any further questions? So, if not, uh, thank you very much, Naoki for your talk Thank and you. for, for spending this very late time <laughs> giving your talk. No problem. <laughs>
Sorry for disturbing. When I wrote you, I saw that you are in Canada. Canada? Uh, yes, I, I didn't know that, that you came back to Japan. Uh, I think Japan is also comfortable for me. <laughs> also, Canada is an like interesting place. It was an interesting place uh, because uh, Tom, we, I, I can't talk to him. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.